The most important message in the world today is the message of the gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Someone asked Prime Minister Gladstone one day, what is the news of the day? And he said, there only is one news, and that's the good news of the gospel. And this is true. Because the word gospel means good news. And this good news is that you and I can be forgiven. Now, I say that's the most important message in the world because it meets the greatest need the need for forgiveness and salvation. It costs the greatest price. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. It involved the greatest miracle. He arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And it produces the greatest results. When you believe Jesus Christ, when you open your heart to him, then Tremendous things begin to happen in your heart. But the next most important message in the world is the message of the mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, And we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Now, was the coming of Christ a mystery? No. Was the coming of the kingdom a mystery? No, there was no mystery. When Martha met the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, right before he came to the tomb of Lazarus, she said what all Jews believed at that time. The Lord said, I am the resurrection and the life. No, the Lord said this, he said, your brother shall rise again. And Martha said, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. That's all she knew. That's all she understood. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection. What does that mean? The resurrection is no longer an event attached to a date or to a place. The resurrection now is all tied up in a person. That person, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the resurrection of the dead, but he's also the rapture of the dead. For the Lord himself shall come with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. In other words, when God saved the apostle Paul, he took him into Arabia and he began to open up his future, the future of the church of God and of all humanity. He began to unfold eschatology for Paul. And he said, Paul, listen carefully to me. I'm going to show you a mystery. A mystery is therefore something that was not known until it was revealed. Martha could not have known it. Nicodemus could not have known it. None of them. Nathaniel, one of the most guileless of all Israelites, could not have known it. There's no way they could have known it because it had not been revealed. The reason it had not been revealed is because there was no body of Christ. Some taken and some left Uh, to be left is a terrible thing for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh so when the son of man cometh some should be taken some should be left It's, it's a big story People sitting here and people that are watching me, that as sure as you're here, you're going to miss the rapture. You haven't prepared for it. You don't live every day ready for it. And you're going to miss it, you see. Some should be taken. Some shall be left. In Noah's day, there were more left than there were taken. They heard, they heard, the Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. For a hundred years, he preached.
preached righteousness. And at the final call, God said, get inside. He and his family were the only ones that went in that ark. The animals had more sense than the humans did. When God told them to get to that ark, Noah did not have to round them up. They came. It's unbelievable. They came. They came in the right numbers, either by two or by seven. They came and they took their place inside of God's provision for them. Some taken, some left. This is the type of thing that happens constantly, you know. Uh, even in our livelihood, sometimes a loved one is taken and we're left behind. And it's a real jolt. Sometimes we didn't expect to be the one left behind. But you can survive that. This is the only one you cannot survive. This is it right here. You don't, you don't survive this. You don't say, who made a mistake? I'll start over. In Noah's day, more were left than went. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Lot, so should it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. Only three survived in Lot's day. There might have been a million people living there together. Only three survivors. Lot and his two daughters. His wife started, she played the tambourine, but she didn't get very far because her love was for Sodom. Some taken, some left. It's an eternal separation. Some taken, some left. It was Jesus that said, there'd be two in the field working. One will go and one will stay. And the one that goes won't be running through the streets of heaven saying, oh my God, I lost, I, I, I lost my loved ones. No, that won't be up there. There's going to be total joy and total happiness for you are there or not. Nobody up there is going to be bereaved because you didn't make it. If you don't make it, it's just you. That's it. Just you. Because in heaven, perfect bliss, perfect exuberance. And if you think you're going to spite somebody, it'd be your own nose and not somebody else. He's coming to be admired. Look at verse 10. He, when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe. Now, what does it mean? Glorified in his saints. You will look at the weakest Christian that you've known on earth. You'll look at the greatest Christian you've known on earth. You'll look at me and I'll look at you. And we will find that each one of us mirrors the Lord Jesus Christ. That his beauty is shed upon us. That his radiance is mirrored. And we shall actually see the Lord Jesus Christ glorified in his saints. Because every one of them will be without sin. Every one of them will be perfectly holy. Every one of them will be out without any shade of the curse. What a wonderful place it's going to be. Not where everything is perfect, but also where everybody is perfect. And all because of Christ. And wherever we look, we will see him and we will admire him. And he will be admired amongst us. We who believe because, says the apostle, our testimony among you was believed. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, to him that the prince of the kings of the earth, to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want you to note carefully that's what the most important thing about the book of Revelation. 2,000 years ago, we did not have a magic man walking upon the earth. 
a man who simply performed miracles and did things and so forth. There's a whole lot more to him than simply what he did. The Apostle John in the book of Revelation begins to unfold to you who he is. He begins to reveal for you the essence of the Lord Jesus Christ to tell you exactly this one that we believe in. Who is he? He said, I am the first and the last. That simply means that it all started with him. It'll all consummate with him. Everything that has to do with humanity and creation started with the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, it will consummate with him at his word. There was a time in eternity past, my friend, when he lived forever. I can't imagine a forever in the past, but there was a forever in the past. There will be a forever in the future. Think of time as an enormous expanse from the time that he called time to the time that time ends and is no more. It's just a little speck in that great sea of forever. Forever in the past, forever in the future. And you're going to be in one place or the other into forever. A little short lifespan on this earth is nothing compared with this one that is the first and the last. He said in Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead. And he said, behold, I'm alive forevermore. I think about the fact that he said, I am he that liveth. He literally said, I'm the living one. I'm alive with my life. It is the life of God. It is a life that knows no death. It is a life that cannot be killed. It is a life that cannot be taken from him. It is a life that is above all that. He must lay it down. And this is why 2,000 years ago when God became a man and he died upon the cross, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It's an impossibility to kill him, but he laid his life down. I can't imagine for somebody doing something like that. What a wondrous thing for a dog like me. Yet he loved me and he washed me for my sins in his own precious blood. What I want you to know is this. You've got the warning. For God's sake, make the rapture. And all the people said, we just want you to. Before the call of the bridegroom, the wise and the unwise look very much alike. Now that really got to me. When you think you know who's going up, who's not going up, I'm afraid you don't know. Your, your opinion may not go very far. But God knows inside of us. The word says if we, didn't, if we judge ourselves, we wouldn't have to be judged. Uh, I don't know that most people know how to judge themselves. Uh, they have built up within themselves a, a great system of I'll do as I please and it's nobody's business. I'll go when I want to go and I won't go when I don't want to go. And I'll go play on the days I want to play and I'll give God a little left over. And, and that is so wrong in this city. What if people had to go to church because inside of them God said go to church? Well, honey, every church in town would be, would be packed and jammed full and all outdoors would be full of people. Who claim to be Christians, I mean. In our community today, it might be that only one in ten of those that claim to be Christians are in church. Oh, I watch television. I overslap. I was reading the morning newspaper. Won't that sound good in judgment? When the one that created the universe with his burning eyes looks straight through you and you whine like a cat. Meditate just for a moment. How many of us at this very second know that you know inside of you, you would not be afraid if Jesus broke the skies this moment and came for his bride. You'd be ready. You know you'd be ready. Would you raise your hand? Let me see. And be honest with your own self. You know that you'd be ready. Isn't that beautiful? Now listen very carefully. How many are not quite sure, but you don't, you don't want to miss this event, but you're not quite sure. Would you raise your hand and keep it up for a moment, would you? All over. All over. You, you, thank you. Thank you. Now you're talking to me. Some didn't raise your hands on either one, which makes me know you're not ready and you don't care. Have you just heard all these dramatic things that you have heard and you haven't been touched yet. 